welcome back to the channel, and I don't want to scare you off, but there's no lesson in this video today, but we are going to talk about my PRS story, my Silver Sky story, how I got associated with the brand. They've been really nice to me, and while I have two Silver Skies at my disposal, not for very long, I decided to float the trim on one and leave the other one stock just as it ships. And I'm really loving how the, the tremolo stays in tune, it feels, it sounds, all that kind of stuff. So I created that little jam you heard earlier with two different you know, parts, but played on the same guitar. I'll run through the, the guitar a little bit and what I like about it, but more importantly, I just wanted to share my story and also show you how I floated the trem on this guitar and how you can maybe do it on your own. Now, I'm not a guitar repairman nor a setup person, but um, I watched videos probably like you would, and I figured it out and it worked out pretty well. So there's a good chance you've heard about this guitar and you've seen it and there's been plenty of stories and how it's controversial and all that kind of stuff, but I ultimately think it's really cool. I really think it's great that PRS is a company that's, dare I say, moving forward even though it's a traditional design. You watch all the videos of uh, John Mayer talking about this guitar and a lot of other guitar aficionados, you can see that it's a step in a direction of the future of this style of instrument and I think it's cool that John decided to work with a company who's a des lead designer and president of the company has got his name on the headstock. Pretty cool, right? The Silver Sky was in, uh, introduced, essentially, in 2018. Had a rosewood fingerboard, four colors started out with, you probably know that. But I first got introduced to it at the Dallas Guitar Show when I was doing some work for Universal Audio and I was hanging out with the guys from Guitar Sanctuary, great shop in Texas. And they have some of the highest end guitars you can imagine, like Tom Anderson, Collings, um, lots and lots of high end custom shops from Fender and so forth. And the guitar that everybody kept coming into play was the Silver Sky. And I was that way too. I'd go there early before anybody showed up and there just happened to be a Bloomfield Drive from Two Rock in the booth because they sell two rocks there. Plug this guitar into that and just had a blast at like 9 a.m. waiting for people to come in so that I could do my own demo. And uh, I got a video of that. It's on my Instagram. I thought I'd load it. Here you go. So perhaps that video was a little foreshadowing too of my future Bloomfield Drive amp. Let's just leave it at that. But you can also see from that video they can sell anything at the Dallas Guitar Show, including women's clothes. <laughs> but in any case, uh, when I got, it wasn't, it wasn't long after that, I received a phone call from my friend Tyler Shirelli, and he is a, a great Nashville guitar player, does a lot of sessions, and he said, hey, I've been a PRS artist for a long time, and I told them to hit you up because I think you'd be a great ambassador for the brand. I mean, geez, like how often does that happen? Not a whole lot, you know? So lo and behold, I get the call from PRS, and I'm like a 15-year-old, you know? Who, who does that, right? And it's really great when a guitar company calls and says, we'd like to send you an instrument to check it out, uh, tell us what you think and feel free to use it on your gigs and shows. And that's exactly what I did and they've sent me a handful uh, to use on tour uh, and it's been the greatest experience because I can leave my vintage guitars at home, they rival the vintage guitars in feel and sound and purpose for what I need and it's just been a godsend. I really appreciate everything PRS has done uh, for me over the past you know, geez, it's like two years now that I've been working with them. But one other cool story that I want to tell you about. So the 2020 NAMM show rolls around and I'm slated to do some more demos for Universal Audio and the Oxbox. I've been doing that with them for a number of years now. They're an amazing company as well. That has been really good to me. So I said, hey, uh, to my folks at PRS, I really need something that's going to give me Hendrix, Stevie Ray type stuff. So do you have a Silver Sky I could borrow for the show? And they said, as a matter of fact, we do. We have a white one, but it's got a maple neck and you can't post any pictures of it until we launch it. So that was difficult. So it was in my hotel room for a minute uh, before I got to actually play it because they didn't even want me taking it out of the bag. But the cool thing was, was that this is the second one 
off the line entirely before the first one that went to probably John Mayer. <laughs> so it'll be uh, bittersweet to let this one go, but it's going back to its rightful home there in Maryland. Uh, I thought, hey, while I have this, I put, I did the whole floating trim uh, treatment on it, which we're going to talk about. And uh, like I said, it's worked out great. PRS has been great to loan me this instrument for that long. Um, but I got my own now. I got the Midnight Rose version that came in, and this one will be going back. But what a perfect opportunity to do a to float or not to float type video. All right, so let's check these two guitars out side by side. And if you like the backing track that I played too, there's a link in the description to grab that track and any other tabs or tracks you've ever seen me do on YouTube, they'll be there as well. All right, let's dive in and play a little bit of the Silver Sky floating trim and non-floating trim. Let's do it. All right, so before we dive into the white Silver Sky with the floating trim, I just thought I'd give you some background. This is the Midnight Rose fresh off the line stop tremolo they put four springs in it when they ship it to you that's per john's request on the setup and you know i enjoy this model the seven and a quarter radius doesn't really bother me i just kind of play to it not a big deal i love the next shape and the pickups sound really good i'm more of a fan of the 60s type sound for a guitar like this and all these pickups really you know they sound good in all combinations um, the neck pickup has to have that robust low end and the scooped mids and all that kind of stuff. But before I play, it's just the Silver Sky going into, um, there's a there's a product there called the E-Verb. It's a two reverb above my two rock there. And then once we come out of the verb, it goes into the two rock and then into the aux box from U Audio or Universal Audio. And I'm not playing a two rock because of John Mayer. It just happens to be coincidence in this video. If you follow me, you know I play them all the time. And I wouldn't say I'm the biggest like John Mayer fanatic like a lot of folks out there, which is totally cool. Um, it's just a total coincidence. Do I have a lot of respect for the man? Absolutely. Killer guitar player, great songwriter, amazing artist, and incredible ambassador for the guitar. He's done a lot for a lot of folks out there as far as inspiration goes. So. There's my, there's my background story there. But let's play this guitar a little bit, then we'll talk about the tremolo on the white Silver Sky with the floating trim. All right, so that number five position has to have that scooped mids, that low, that low end that is just nice and tight and just warm and sounds like what you expect, right? <laughs> That sounds great. The number four position has to go into Hendrix world for me. Whenever I hear it, it's gotta be even more scooped, got that sort of watery thing happening. And the middle position on a guitar like this is often overrated. It's middle and it's straight down the middle. Great for any kind of rock slide playing. Can't go wrong. Now the number two position, this is where you're getting into your. Also great for that sort of quacky funk. Great. So we go to the bridge position, and the thing I always think about when I play a bridge position pickup on a guitar like this is how shrill is it going to be? And it's it's round, it's bright, but it's round. Little out of tune. All right, so I'm tuned up. Now I think I can play the bridge position effectively. It's not super shrill, which is great. I mean, you throw some overdrive on that, you're gonna be impressed, I guarantee it. I know I was, but, so that's the guitar, that's the rig. Let's jump in and play the white frost model with the floating trim, and I'll show you what I did. All right, so if you have a guitar like this and you want to venture into the floating trim land, 
I encourage you to do it. It's a lot of fun. And this guitar has been staying in tune remarkably well, which was one of my concerns. I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. Uh, probably need to lube the nut up a little bit. You'll hear some creaking on it, but that's going to happen. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you have a proper lubricant uh, to do that and lube your parts from time to time. And you know, I didn't really know what I was doing when I got into this. So a buddy of mine who works on some of my guitars said, watch Carl Verheyen's video about how he sets up his Stratocaster type guitars. So what I did was um, I just watched that video and I did what he did. He um, takes a spring out of the back and uses three and then you'll see the claw is at an angle. And I set my guitar up visually just like how he did it. And then I started sort of tweaking it and dialing it in. He likes to take um, the third string and when you pull on the bar, it does it a minor third up. Okay, so that was sort of my benchmark. Everything else falls into place after that. The second string will go up a whole step. I hear a little creaking in there right now. And then the first string will go up a half step. So you have some fun options there. I mean, me, I'm just a sweller kind of guy. I'm a swell guy, that's what I've heard. And the trim feels really good. I mean, if you didn't do this to your Silver Sky, you might not know that. Um, so I enjoy just kind of playing like that. I always want to have it available. I'd have a trim or a Bigsby on everything if I could. But what's cool, what Carl might do, and I can't play like Carl, but... When you do that minor third thing now, like if I'm going A up to C sharp, I can I can bend up a fret and a half or step and a half and get the you know the fifth of that chord. Now when I want to play something on the second string. Maybe I want to play A minor pentatonic idea, go from here to here. Yeah. So, and then the first string might not give me as many options as I'd hope, but maybe you want to go. Yeah, got to get in tune. So still working with it, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I just thought, wow, I have two guitars of the same type for a minute in my studio. This one's going to go back to PRS now that I have my the Midnight Rose that um, I think is going to suit me well. Um, it's been a lot of fun. And again, thanks to PRS for being such a great partner and allowing me to borrow these guitars and, and have fun with them, make some videos, hopefully answer some questions for you guys. But um, yeah, and if you got any questions, put them in the comments below. Love talking to you guys. You can hit me up on my website. It's in the description in the video. Um, if you ever see any tabs or tracks of, uh, or you're interested in anything that I've ever done on YouTube with a lesson, you can find those there too. Um, I give you guys a lot of stuff because I want the community to grow and I want to create something fun here that you can always come back to on my channel. All right. So a lot of fun. I'm Corey Congilio. You might've known that already. If not, Nice to meet you. I hope you enjoyed this fun video about the PRS Silver Sky, to float or not to float the tremolo. And above all things, I encourage you, if you dig this stuff, please subscribe to the channel and you can ring the bell so you know when I put out new content. I also do live streams every Thursday that are a lot of fun. I'd love for you to join me and my community here on YouTube and my YouTube channel. All right, now, stop sounding like a newscaster. I'm gonna go play guitar. I think you should do the same thing. All right, see you next time.